to welcome everyone who is listening to this recording. Today, we're going to be reading the rules book written by Ellen Fine and Sherry Schneider. And specifically, we're going to start reading the rule number 22 under the title, Don't live with a man or leave your things in his apartment. So while I'm waiting for everybody else to join the group chat, I'm just going to start reading out the chapters and uh, comment at the end of, of what's written. All right, rule number 22. Don't live with a man or leave your things in his apartment. To live together or not to live together. Is that a question you're grappling with now? Your friends, not knowing the rules, might say, do it. Your parents, being conservative, will no doubt say no. The rules answer is, move in only if you've set a wedding date. In other words, the only reason to live with somebody if, is if you're planning the wedding and you don't want to pay two rents. Contrary to popular belief, living together is not a trial period for him to see how he feels about you. He either loves you or he doesn't and playing house and cooking him a lot of breakfasts don't change a thing. In fact, sometimes the best way for him to see how he feels about you is not to see you at all. You might have to dump him if he can't commit. If he really loves you, he'll beg you to come back. If he doesn't, you've lost nothing, save time and can now go on to somebody else. Women who think that commitment will come after the shake-up often learn the hard way that this is not the case. Of course, by the time the lesson is learned, their self-esteem is shattered and they're two or three or four years older. Does this scenario sound familiar? After dating Mitch for a year and a half, Wendy wanted a ring. Mitch wouldn't budge. They decided to live together to see if they could work it out. His idea and word choice. Nothing changed. When he went away on business trips, he didn't call or think about her that much. Nine months and a lot of wasted time later, he was still not in love. And so he moved out. Wendy attributed the breakup to his parents' messy divorce, which he was working out in therapy the truth is he should have just she should have just ended it sooner when he wouldn't commit if you operate under the delusion that living together without a real commitment will somehow bring your closer together you should know that many women tell us that their husbands proposed after they moved away from not toward their relationship when women one woman booked a trip to Club Med with a girlfriend after dating her boyfriend for a year. Another, another started getting very busy and unavailable on weekends. And a third talked about getting, taking a job in another city. Then their husbands proposed. Remember, men don't necessarily propose when you're cuddled up on the couch watching a rented video, but do so when they're afraid of losing you. In Love Story, a movie, you should study like a Bible. Oliver proposes to Jenny, a rules girl, if there ever was one, after she says she's planning to take a scholarship in France and after suggesting that their opposite rich, poor backgrounds would not mix well. Jenny wasn't grateful or loving at the moment. She almost broke off the relationship. You don't have to go that far. But be a little distant and difficult. The unobtainable is always more exciting. Men often want something they just men men often want something more just because they can't have it. If you're following the rules, particularly rule number 13, don't see him more than once or twice a week. You can't possibly live with him by design or by accident. Women who tell us that they moved in with a man accidentally as a result of spending long weekends with him, obviously broke a few rules along the way. You stay over a lot and one thing leads to another. First, you get a drawer, then the shelf, and then the closet full of the closet of your own. Before you or he realize it, 
you're having your mail delivered to his apartment and your friends are leaving messages on his tape machine. Needless to say, this should not be happening. If you are doing the rules, you never need a closet full of clothes and accessories in his place. Don't leave your toothbrush or bathrobe there. He should be begging you to leave things in his apartment and going out of his way to make shelf space. This invasion of space should not come from you. You are independent. You're not a crasher. You're always ending the evening or the morning first. Besides, the less he sees some of your less glamorous habits, like the way you floss your teeth or the sound you make when you slurp your coffee, the better. Is there, a, is there any reason to live with a man if you haven't set a wedding date? Yes. And that's when he wants to, wants to and you don't. He's crazy about you and you're not so sure about him. In this case, he's taking the risk, not you. Still, proceed with caution. Living with him may prevent you from dating others and meeting somebody you're crazy about. So how smart is it? So this is the end of the full chapter about why you should not be living with a man or leaving any kind of personal items and things in his apartment. And uh, why I picked this rule for today's reading is because I think it hits home for many, many of us and for me as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna start sharing uh, my personal um, rule story about this. Uh, and um, I clearly remember the first time when, when this idea came up to my mind, thinking that living together with my boyfriend is just the next step in the relationship, thinking, well, if he's so serious about me, we definitely should live together. We definitely should, you know, have this next step taking before we eventually get married. But I mean, I don't know if I even thought about marriage at that point. I was very young. I think I was 19 or 18, something around that. Um, <clears throat> when I had this first moment of living with a man. And so what happened, um, so we were dating, actually it was his idea to move in together. And I thought, well, why not? Since it was his idea. And I thought, well, okay, maybe we should actually do this. And um, yeah, I remember we were long distance for a while because he lived in another city and he was constantly telling me how I should, pointing out how I should be starting looking for apartments and picking out the furniture. Because he was away on a trip somewhere, an internship for half of a year, and I was back home in, in, in my country. And so, and I was so, I remember I was so flattered thinking, oh my God, this guy is so serious. Like he suggests all these kind of things. And I, I thought, well, yeah, this is serious. But okay, first, first thing that I didn't notice was that he was putting all the work onto my shoulders and the second and so what happened in real life was i actually moved to his apartment because he lived in another city i moved to another city to live with that man i found a place of work which was close to his apartment hence to where we both lived and what happened the, the moment I actually moved in with him, I think within a day or two, he told me that he wasn't ready and that he needed his little freedoms. He, he called it little freedoms. And I, I remember, I, I mean, come on, I was 19 years old thinking like my world is just crushing down because I put, I just took everything and moved to him for the first time in my life. I actually moved out of my uh, parents' uh, house, and this is the first time living somebody somewhere else with somebody else, having a first time like real job experience, like out of school. And for me, it was like, oh my god, maybe she's getting cold feet, but you know, I'm not gonna pressure him into something. I'm just gonna be like, you know, low key, laid back, and he's gonna just get used to me. But two weeks later, he actually told me um, again the same thing. He's like, yeah, you know, I remember told you this already I actually prefer to live alone and and have my little freedoms that's how he called it 
uh, and I this time I realized okay this is very serious he wants me to move on like ASAP so I actually then started looking for apartments it was a hustle because the, the city where we lived it was a metropole but it, it was a city well known for having a hard time to find a place to live there like you would be living in a sh shabby okay I'm gonna say it, it was Berlin I we lived in Berlin and it's it's just hard to find a place to live there especially if you're on a tight budget like I was and uh, so I finally moved out and it was an odyssey of different places to live because it was a sublease apartments and rooms and oh my god I suffered so much because of this anyway I remember I couldn't even like break up with him after that I was just heartbroken but I decided to stay with him anyway okay fast forward and moved in with another guy and that time it kind of worked out for a while and he even proposed to me um at one point however we lived for like almost four years together and he, we still have not set the wedding date so we broke off our engagement and this is how things turned out basically i wasted on these two men around five and a half maybe six years of just dating and then finally like getting over these guys also took me another couple of years so like this breaking of the rule took me a lot of my youth and time and time that i should have invested in maybe studying and um i don't know doing my masters or phd or whatever i could have done in that time but I wasted on two relationships with men who would not commit. And um, so I wish I knew the rules before the age of 20, when I discovered 27, I think I was 27. I, I would have saved so much time and not lived with any of these guys. Um, yeah, so, and a few more stories that I overheard from my friends and family and, and, and just random people. Like, I have to admit, that um okay i'm just gonna read out uh, there was one line i'm just gonna find this one line yeah so if you operate and so i'm reading this out it's page 109 at the bottom if you operate under the delusion that living together without a real commitment will somehow bring you closer together you should know that many women tell us that the, their husbands proposed after they moved away from, not toward the relationship. And then and then they, told, they tell how one woman booked a trip to Met Club Med and another one started to be unavailable. And uh, the third one talked about taking a job in another city. Actually, I know a girl who told me she got engaged to her boy, living boyfriend, so they lived together. And then he finally popped the question because she planned actually moving to another city for more education or something like that. I think I think she she started looking for uh, studies, um, universities in another town, even another country, I think. And then then boom, he proposed. And I don't think she even realized that um, that he proposed because he was afraid to lose her basically so i don't know if they got married eventually or not but yeah she got engaged to her now fiance because he was afraid that she's gonna move away and i mean i have countless of examples from uh couples that i know that the woman the wife will tell me yeah they almost broke up and then he finally popped the question so the point of this chapter is that yeah, indeed, men really uh, will actually commit when they when they are afraid to lose you. But the base, the baseline has to be that they are actually interested in being with you and dating you and and mm -hmm. want to commit. When the guy doesn't love you, like living with him, doesn't give you any any advances. All right, I'm done with my speech. Hello, Renegade. How are you? Hi. Sorry. Sorry. Late. <laughs> Woke up. I'm like, oh man, cold medicine kicked in. But um, but no, yeah. I know the chapter I, you're talking about because I've read it I'm, more than once. And uh, and um, 
let's see what did my mom always used to say about it uh that's given too much candy for a nickel which basically means the same thing you're giving wifely benefits without being the wife or as the saying goes why buy the whole cow when you could get the milk for free and i you know and trust me ladies i used to be the one who believed oh you lived with a guy you show him how good you what a wife you will be and you'll get that ring on your finger nope 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 never happened i either threw him out or mostly it was i threw him out and um and it doesn't happen. And I've also had male friends who, when women thought that they were going to be slick and leave stuff at their place, they let other women use it. So, oh my God, it's just so right. This is such a such a such a like popular belief. Or, oh, if you're going to leave one thing and then the next one and the third one, eventually he's going to make more room for in the closet for your stuff. And then you you like again sneaking your way into his you know into co cohabitation together right it's like <laughs> oh because oh, i had i had a friend big charlie and we all knew big charlie pardon my french ladies but we all knew he was a horn dog and uh, but he would uh, and but i was like his female friend best friend and he was a lovable rogue i'll just say that and he told me, hey, uh, every time a female thinks she's going to be slick and she starts leaving her stuff at my place, he's like, I let the next female who's over here use it. And I was like, oh, okay. So that told me right then and there, don't ever think you're being slick if you leave like uh, your toothbrush, your hairbrush, uh, maybe some of your feminine cycle necessities or anything no trust me they're getting used and if they don't then that guy's one in a million else when i brought that up to some other male friends they said the same thing oh yeah we let other girls use them <laughs> and i was like boop, boop, you guys are dogs and they're like aren't you glad oh we're my teaching God, you this is so embarrassing <laughs> this is so embarrassing why well, you just call it use-ups other females <laughs> use-ups this is how men really like operate word saying oh my god i mean if i would see something like feminine hygiene products or anything like shampoo or whatever in a male's apartment okay whatever i i, I think i would just leave like i if this is like maybe one thing little thing maybe like a bobby pin okay but if this is like a stack full of shampoos and feminine products i would be like okay this guy is a is a player i should better leave or he's got a female because i remember i was about maybe 26 27 somewhere in there and i was out at i was out at the bar and this cute handsome guy walked in and he knew my trainer is when i was competitive weightlifting and we started talking and he asked if i wanted to come back to his place and i said okay and we i went back to his place and asked if i could use the restroom and i looked around the restroom I'm like no nah, this isn't a guy's restroom this is not a guy restroom <laughs> and i looked at the shower products and i'm like no this is not and then i happened to walk out and i turned my head and i saw the bed i'm like this isn't a guy's bedroom and i walked out i told him i was leaving he's like why and i'm like uh i don't want your girlfriend walking in or your wife bye and i went to train the next day and i told my trainer about it and my trainer's like you were right he does have a girlfriend and i was like <laughs> and he's like thank you for telling me because um now i have something to tell him because come to find out uh he didn't view this guy as a friend like the guy viewed him yeah i remember i just remembered something that i did personally uh when i was not knowing the rules that i should not be leaving anything in the guy's apartment i remember i left things like a sleeping mask or the earplugs with which i sleep at night or i was leaving my toothbrush or there would be like something you know that i truly forgot or oh my god i think like <laughs> it's so embarrassing think, just thinking about it all the hygiene stuff like shampoos just because i thought it's so convenient why i should be slapping it over 
uh, to his place every time. Or I, I remember I was dating a guy <laughs> before the rules and I, and he was from out of town. He was flying in back and forth from LA to New York. And I remember, I remember, and so I lived in Brooklyn and he lived in Manhattan. So I packed my luggage for the weekends just to stay over to his place in, in New York um, City in Manhattan. I think now back, I'm like, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I was packing actually a luggage to spend a weekend with him. How embarrassing is that, please? I wish I knew that I should not be doing that. <laughs> he was probably feeling totally invaded. Oh, oh, like I said, I have so many horror stories where when I read the rules and I reread them and I reread them, I'm like, I just sometimes want to scream and pull out my hair and go, well, I wish I had known that. And, you know, but that's why I try to have the attitude of live and learn, live and learn. Yeah, I and mean, be happy. You know this now. Many women yeah, up into the 60s, they never learn it. They, they really like think that their relationship didn't work out because other reasons. But like there are many rules breaking actually in the process of dating a guy. I mean, one breaking, one rules breaking will probably not make a guy turn away from a girl that is maybe his dream girl. But a lot of rules breaking will. And that's a problem. Uh that you know, and that and that is true, cause and um, and I also because I got to admit I do this on purpose too. Like if I want to lose a guy's interest, and I mean I want him away, away, away. I will purposely break a few rules so he will back away. And I'm like, thank you. If he's not taken, I'm not interested. Uh, and yeah. uh, yeah. So, I so I um purposely break a few rules, and, um, but right. I, you know, but see, I like I said, I have known. Okay, I had this friend, you know, she modeled and everything. She was not bad looking at all. Whenever we went out somewhere, I used to tell her, "Hey, you know, her name was Lisa. Hey, do a Lisa," and trust me, our nights were never paid for by us. I mean, she just had that kind of charisma. And she had it for this one guy. And she begged this guy to live with her. And I'm like, you don't beg a guy to live with you. You don't. Look at you. You got men who would sleep outside on your front lawn if you had a lawn. Why are you begging him to live with you? And he lost the rent check once. <laughs> and she had to fly home from fly to Vegas from Michigan to uh, give the rent check. And we all knew he was doing her dirty and all that. And, you know, but she but she told me once, I like doing all this wifey things for him. And I like baking for him. And, she, and I was like, and what's he doing for you? What is he doing for you? That's As such he, a female's natural giving nature isn't it like we just want to give we want to nurture we want to to be the, the mothers for our boyfriends but it, it's just not what men actually want they want this unattainable elusive mysterious girl that they think is super hot that's all and, we, <laughs> and because baking cookies and making breakfast this is where they think oh that's nice you know they tell you that they want this they want to, to live together to, to see whether whether you're compatible but that's just not working out i mean the thing is i know some couples who live together before they got engaged and married but honestly it's there are so many factors beforehand like how the relationship started how when they started living together and stuff so yeah sometimes there's more to it but most likely so the statistics are just there that the the living together situation and getting married afterwards is a very there's a higher percentage there's a higher chance that that this couple is going to break up at some point and of course it's it's not always like that even if you didn't live together and then you you finally moved in after you got married but honestly you know there's still a chance that it doesn't work out but the thing is living together is just a risk he's gonna run away and i have had it i would not do this again <laughs>